Carl Jepsen immigrated to the fine city of Chicago in the late 19th century from Sweden. During the Prohibition, along with selling cigars at a shop, Carl started making his own Baskvavanen. His take on the traditional style of bitter, using wormwood herbs as a key ingredient, Carl claimed his homemade spirit was a type of digestive that would rid the stomach of worms and other parasites. Jepson skirt liquor regulations by telling the local police, when confronted, that his potion was used solely for medicinal purposes. So, when the officers tried it for themselves, they concluded that there was no way this drink would ever be used recreationally. By the middle of the Great Depression, Carl Jepson sold his recipe for Malor to Bizzalaw Products, where from that point on, Malor was produced on a large scale until the Marsal Distillery closed in 1986. While Malor was being made in small batches in Florida, it wasn't until its mainstream revival online by both Sam Meckling and Patricia Bablick where eventually the recipe and the Jepson brand name was purchased by the CH Distillery in 2018. Prost. Cheers. Cheers. Go. Hooray! Actually, it's not as bad as I last remember it. It will be. It's bitter. So it is like drinking like barrel aged apple juice sweetness at the front, and then it is like your your grandma had sex with your middle school like math teacher, and the baby <laughs> comes out. Stay with me, I'm almost there. The baby comes out, lives a, lives a long happy life and then gets her legs chopped off and she crawls all the way over to the bar you're at and then grabs the oldest permanent marker she's ever seen and draws on your tongue with it. That's what I'm gonna look tastes like. Thank that, you. I, God bless America. <laughs> Malor, like PBR, uses word of mouth and sarcastic humor to market holistically to a younger bar going crowd. However, Jepson ups the ante on using its hometown heritage to get people to drink this almost unpalatable liquor. While most of the advertising will challenge each drinker to take a shot, like weeding out the weak since 33, this sort of advertising harkens to its 90-year assault on Chicago's taste buds. Since the early 50s, labels on the bottles and ads alike confronted the consumer's fortitude directly. Essentially asking drinkers, are you strong enough to take a shot of Malor? This mentality worked itself into the city culture, and with a little shot in the arm via Twitter, Malor became a cult symbol of the Chicago bar scene. Many people took its somewhat aggressive marketing as a rite of passage. Regardless of how long you've lived in the city, you're not a real Chicagoan until you had a drink of Malor. That's what makes this spirit so special. Just as the city has influenced the drink, Malor has ingrained itself into the identity of Chicago. Its cult status has put it in every bar within Cook County, regardless of what they serve, where they are, or how fancy the establishment may be. What's even more fascinating is that no one denies its overly bitter taste of this absinthe derivative. It's why each Chicagoan takes pride in its disgusting character. It's a statement saying, I've taken a shot of Malor, I've lived the tale to tail, and that's why I'm a Chicago native. While there are many beautiful icons that make up the Windy City, Malor marks itself with a bold, off-putting declaration. Its story, its unsavory flavor, and how it's received is all emblematic of the second city itself. We're the underdog. Malor stands eloquently among a baseball team that was cursed to lose for 71 years and where a city rebuilt itself after a fire allegedly caused by a cow. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, Alex, to Chicago. To life. What do you think? I swear, my lord has more sweetness in it than people give it credit for. It's almost like a stevia, like type of sweetness, like a, you know, like um, well, stevia or like um, Monkford, I guess, you know, like it's like an off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all kind of yeah, or like a simple syrup. But yeah. It's offset by like the pungent funkiness of like. It kind of almost just tastes like you're licking a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what do you think about the cultural relevance? I think uh, it's annoying when people have nothing to talk about other than Malort because they lean into it so hard. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a fun thing, but I've met people who can't not talk about Malort, and if they talk about Chicago, they have to bring up Malort, and it's just like, 
fucking the, the dead horse is dead. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It wasn't made in Chicago uh, until what, 2018. Oh yeah. Well, I know it was in Florida. They love it, right? Or, well, it was made in Florida. Yeah. But um, I think it's great. I mean, I honestly at this point have nostalgia for it from like standing outside in the cold and drinking it around um, like a campfire. Yeah. It sounds weird, but I actually think it tastes better when you're in the presence of smoke. And most liquors, especially ones that don't taste great, having them be ice cold is a bit of a hack. It'll make it a little better. Right. But I think that there's something where like being around smoke, it wel- the flavor welcomes a little bit of smokiness. You know? Right. Chicago is a beautiful city. It's home to Wrigley Field, the Sears Tower, the John Hancock, the Field Museum, where Sue the T-Rex is displayed, the Art Institute, where the largest collection of French Impressionist paintings are, along with Nighthawks and American Gothic is kept, the Daily Plaza, with the famous Picasso statue, the Music Box Theater, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, and Maxwell Street. The lore that surrounds Chicago is immeasurable. From its innovative architecture to classic blues and the start of rock and roll, all the way down to its food. There's so much that makes the city what it is, and the people who live there take great pride in being lifelong residents. While the state of Illinois is vast and has its own variety of towns, no other place shares the same level of pride as the Windy City itself. In 1871, the Great Chicago Fire engulfed roughly four square miles of the city center. The fire destroyed over 17,000 structures, claimed the lives of approximately 300 people, and left a third of its inhabitants homeless. Regardless of this devastation, the city rebuilt. With donations from around the U.S. and Europe, reconstruction efforts began quickly and spurred great economic development that resulted in massive growth in the city's population. Having a new start and increased building standards, architects laid the foundation for a modern city featuring the world's first skyscrapers. A decade after the fire, the population of the city nearly doubled, and within 20 years, Chicago hosted the technological marvel of the world's Columbian Exposition. Whenever you're ready, cheers. All right, all right Alex, good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, a little sip of my work. Yeah, it's an acquired taste, all right. Yeah. It is a little chemical-y. <laughs> I was thinking it was more like aquavit with a kind of a earthy, herby. Right. But it's not really. It's, um, yeah, it's more... Um, I can't tell. Okay. okay. Do you taste any sweetness? It may not be perfect, but nothing can crush the resilience of Chicago or its people. There's a lot that gives the city its personality and charm. The lore carved itself a niche with ketchupless hot dogs, tavern style pizza, and Italian beef sandwiches. While it may not be the most pleasant thing you can drink at the bar, it's made its statement, and once given the chance, it's honestly not that bad. <laughs> 